Hi, welcome. In this session, I'd like to talk a little bit about how I compute cost of capital in my cost of capital data sets that I report for the US, global, and, sub and, and regional groupings. So let me take you through the line items in this particular spreadsheet so you can at least see where the numbers are coming from. You first notice some numbers in yellow. These are the numbers you can change. So these spreadsheets were updated in early January 2019. So you'll see the, and they're all in US dollar terms. You'll see the T-bond rate, 2.68% on that day. The equity risk premium, this is the US cost of capital data set. The risk premium will be different in the other cost of capital spreadsheet. Um, and any country default spread. And since it's the US data, there is no country default that I'm adding in. In addition, you'll notice a table to the right. So this is a lookup table for me to allow to estimate cost of debt for individual sectors. Remember, sectors are not rated, so I can't look up a rating for a sector. I also estimate, allow you to input a marginal tax rate. For the US, I've entered 25%, and you'll see where that plays out when I show you the numbers. And finally, I give you a very simple way in which you can adjust your cost of capital. If you don't want to see it in US dollars into any other currency, by entering the inflation rate in the currency that you want to work with, as opposed to the inflation rate in US dollars. Here, for instance, uh, my inflation rate in US dollars is 1.9%. And if you wanted to enter a different currency with an inflation rate of 6%, I'll show you what the numbers look like. So let me go through column by column so you can see the process play out. First, the breakdown by, by industries is exactly the same breakdown I use in all my data sets. It's 94 different industries. You'll see the number of firms in each industry in the second column. You'll see the average beta. This is the levered beta because the cost of equity is based on levered beta. So this is the average beta across all companies in this business. So it's an average regression beta. The law of large numbers work in your favor. I take the risk-free rate that I've been inputted, in this case, the risk-free rate in US dollars, plus the beta times the equity risk premium, at least in the spreadsheet, be 2.68% plus the beta for advertising times the equity risk premium to come up with the cost of equity for advertising companies. Then I report the percentage of overall value in these companies that comes from equity. This is first a market value of equity, not a book value of equity. And the debt is a total debt. It includes lease commitments. And it's also an aggregate ratio. What does that mean? I add up the equity of all publicly traded advertising companies and add up the debt of all of the publicly traded companies. And this is the aggregate ratio. Why the aggregate as opposed to the average? Because the averages can sometimes do strange things to you if you have an outlier or two. So this is the aggregate number. I also report a standard deviation in stock prices if you need a proxy, another proxy for this, but it's really not used in my cost of capital calculations for my cost of equity, but it is used for my cost of debt. And here's how it's used. I will make the argument that the more volatile a company is, the higher the cost of debt should be. So I have a lookup table where if you tell me what the standard deviation of a sector is, I look up the default spread that goes with it. So I take the standard deviation, go to the lookup table, I find the default spread that goes with that standard deviation, add it to my risk-free rate, that's my cost of debt for the sector. It is the simplest way I could think of to get a cost of debt for a sector. Then I multiply the cost of debt by one minus the tax rate. I report an effective tax rate, but I don't use it. I actually use the marginal tax rate, but if you set the yes to the no and the options there, I will use your effective tax rate, but do so with caution. Remember, interest saves you taxes in the margin. You're supposed to use a marginal tax rate to come up with an after-tax cost of debt. The debt ratio, of course, I do the same thing that I did with the equity ratio using aggregate debt divided by aggregate debt plus market equity. So the debt ratio plus the equity ratio should equate, should equate to 100%. The cost of capital then is a weighted average of my cost of equity that I got with the levered beta and my cost of debt based on the standard deviation. That cost of capital is in US dollar terms. Remember, we, I asked you to input an inflation rate with a 6% inflation rate. I compute in the last column the cost of capital in whatever your currency is. So you can convert this table into any currency by entering the inflation rate in that currency. So use the cost of capital cautiously. The way I use this cost of capital is A, to give me perspective. When I value an advertising company in US dollars, I can at least check to see whether the cost of capital I'm getting is within shouting distance the average. And if it's not, I can look at why my company might have a higher or lower cost of capital. 
So from that perspective, the cost of capital is useful for perspective. If I'm in a hurry to value a company or I cannot get a cost of capital for a company, I sometimes value companies using the industry average cost of capital. So this table is not meant to be a magic bullet, but it does give you a sense of what the cost of capital look like across different businesses in US dollar terms, but if you want it to any other currency. I hope you find it useful. Thank you.